I teach courses on race relations law. And in that setting, there are a number of topics that come up that I think that some people would view as, uh, you know, um, some people would, would, would want to sort of close the door on certain arguments. So, you know, affirmative action. Now it's a very contentious issue in American society, obviously, but in some precincts, in some classes, I think for somebody to say, hey, I'm against affirmative action. In fact, I don't even call it affirmative action. I call it reverse discrimination. You know, that's certainly going to generate some eye rolls. It's going to generate some buzz. And there are going to be some people who would even take the position that such a statement is, you know, let's say racially insensitive or racist. You know, in my view, um, and I've been pro affirmative action for most of my adult, all of my adult life, and written in favor of affirmative action. In my view, of course that point of view should be uh, discussed. And by the way, what's the best argument for that point of view? I see no no difficulty, no problem at all in fully airing that. But in some places, it does cause a problem. In some places, I mean, if you think about um, the, uh, the internment of people of Japanese ancestry in World War II, I think in some places to make the argument that what the United States government did then was justifiable. I think that that would cause a real ruckus. Um, I think that what happened was absolutely deplorable, but in a classroom, it seems to me, and I've done this, you know, what is the best argument on behalf of the government? Was there some rationale to it? After all, there were some very impressive people who went along with the government. I mean, you know, what were they thinking? What was their rationale? So these are are some issues which I think, again, in some places uh, would, these are some some arguments that in some places would be viewed as verboten. I don't think they should be viewed as verboten. So let me stay with that example for just a minute because I thought a lot about how the internment of Japanese Americans uh, has been taught over time. So let me tell you a story briefly, I promise. So I started teaching high school social studies in 1979. And one of the classes I taught was a US history class. And we used a textbook called The American Dream by Lou Smith, which at the time was considered a very left-wing textbook. And one of the things that made it a left-wing textbook is that it had a lot of controversial issues in it, encouraging history teachers to engage students in discussion of historical and contemporary controversies. And the question of whether or not the US government was right or correct when interning Japanese Americans was in 1979 taught as a controversial issue. It was in uh, curriculum materials as a controversial issue. And that is, is how it was taught. And I, for two or three years, you know, taught it that way in the same way I would teach any other controversial issue. And then finally, I think around 1982 or 1983, I started getting really nervous about that. You know, I was watching how that issue was being perceived differently Um, outside of U.S. history textbooks. You know, we were, this was a time of reparations, a time of official apologies. And so what was happening is that issue was tipping from being considered a settled, an open issue with the question being, you know, was the government right or not, to being a more settled issue, a question for which there was a right answer. And the right answer was that the government was wrong. And it's a very hard thing for teachers to be teaching during these tips and trying to decide, do they wanna be on the front end or the back end of a tip? But today, when you look at curriculum materials, almost all of them uh, treat the internship of Japanese Americans as a human rights violation of enormous proportions. And if students are being asked to consider, you know, what were the ar- arguments at the time, it's usually done in a real historical context. Let's just look at the arguments that were that were raised at that time. But it's very unusual, at least in my experience, to see that issue treated as a controversial issue. And I think that 
Um, and I think that's absolutely fine. I think there's all sorts of things that should be taught as a question for which there is uh, a right answer. I think the question of whether women should have the right to vote is, a, is something that I've taught a lot about for decades. And I think that's a question for which there's a right answer. But you know, it wasn't all that long ago in the United States, and it's certainly still an open question in some other societies about, you know, how how particular societies should deal with that. So my point, and now I'm I'm going against what I said. This is taking too long. Is that what is considered open or settled changes over time, and that's not because it's just the nature of I think how these things work, and I think that is a particular problem during a time of intense polarization. Diana, I actually want to follow up on that then. So. Uh, certainly, there are many issues that, uh, say, an instructor or facilitator is likely to believe, rightly or wrongly, are closed or settled issues. Uh, what would you say to a student or maybe a parent uh, knocking on a teacher's door, or professor's door, who uh, wants to make the case that the internment was justified or who wants to make the case that uh, women shouldn't have the right to vote, for example? Do you, do you just say, sorry, we're not going to talk about that? I mean, how do you, uh, how do you approach that? Yeah, I wish somebody else would answer that question first because it's so hard. I want to make a distinction between how an issue is framed in the curriculum and what you say when a student says something in class. So if I'm teaching about uh, whether women should have the right to vote in the United States, I'm going to frame that in a particular way. But if a student says in class, well, I don't think that's true, I'm, I'm, I'm not going necess- to shut that student down unless that student says it in a way that is really personally insulting. So if that student says that that it's not true because women are by definition inferior, then I'm going to, that's going to, I'm going to deal with that in a different way. 